Okay, let's take a look at 8.1.1. We have d over dx of 3x minus 5x squared. We can simply use the power rule here, right, to determine that, of which we're going to get 3 minus 10x. No complications there. We're just using the power rule. And then taking a look at 8.1.2, we're supposed to find g prime of x when g of x is equal to 2 over x squared minus and then we have the square root of x to the 7. So a few issues might, uh, might arise here. We are not able to use the power rule when our function looks like that. So what do we do? We just rewrite it. We don't have to really complicate things. Uh, what do I mean by that? Let me show you. So we're going to have, for the first part, g of x is equal to 2 multiplied by x to the minus 2. When you bring x squared to the numerator, the power changes sign right and then we're gonna have minus x to the 7 over 3 so when we have written it like this we can then derivate and then we are able to see g prime of x we cannot say g prime of x at this step it would be wrong we say it on the last step so this will be equals to minus 4x minus 3 right and then minus 7 over 3 x to the 7 over 3 minus 1 so 7 over 3 minus 1 4 over 3 so 4 over 3 so g prime of x is minus 4 divided by x to the power 3 minus 7 over 3 x to the 4 over 3 so i think we can leave it like that i don't think um yeah we we can be required uh, to further simplify it i think that is perfectly fine and then 8.2, determine the equation of the tangent to f of x at x is equal to 2. So f of x is equal to x to the power 3 minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 3. When we derivate this, right, we are going to have 3x squared minus 8x plus 2. And then we substitute 2. So f prime of 2 is equal to 3 multiplied by 2 squared minus 8 multiplied by 2 plus 2. And I think this is minus 2. So that is 8.2. And then 8.3.1, we're supposed to find f prime of x using first principles. If f of x is equal to minus 6x squared. So I'm not going to do I'm I'm not going to do this one just for the sake of time. But ultimately, the answer we should get f prime of x is equal to minus twelve x. Right. This will be f prime of x. But you you are supposed to use the first principles. You can see the mark allocation is five. Easy marks, really free marks. Uh, the mark allocation is five. But you are supposed to use the power rule. You are not supposed to. Uh, you are supposed to use first principle not the power rule. The power rule just helps you to see if you've done the correct thing. And then 8.3.2, write down how you will restrict the domain of f such that f inverse, uh, such that f inverse, the inverse of f is a function. Okay, in order for me to explain this, I will also be answering 8.3.3 in the same way. Let me show you why. Okay, so y is equal to minus 6x squared, right? So the inverse is x is equal to minus 6y squared. So we end up with y squared being equal to x divided by minus 6. So y is equal to plus or minus x divided by minus 6. So you can see that we need values of x to be negative here. We need values of x to be negative because when values of x are negative, it ensures that uh, the square root is defined. Because if x is positive, it's not going to be defined because we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So we need x to be positive here. We need x to be greater than zero. So this is the restriction we can impose. We need x to be greater than zero because when x is greater than zero, the square root is going to be defined. If it is zero, it is undefined. If it is negative, it is 
and well we don't need it to be greater than zero we need it to be less than zero we need x to be less than zero because if x is positive let's say two for instance when i have two divided by minus six which is minus one over three and that is going to be undefined because it is under the square root so we need x to be less than zero for instance minus six we're going to have minus six divided by minus six which is one and that is fine so okay there we go we need x to be less than zero not greater than okay 8.3.3 determine the equation of f inverse for which f inverse is less or equals to zero write your answer in the form y is equals to so you can see we have a plus or minus if we need it to be less than zero this is the option that we need to take f inverse of x is equals to minus the square root of x divided by minus six yeah we Go.